School of Rock and Boyhood, and he's a hometown hero here in Austin. Please welcome director, producer, and screenwriter Richard Linklater, and another hometown hero, actor Glenn Powell, to the South by Southwest studio. Thanks, guys, for coming here. We're live for the first time in two years. It's exciting. I know. I How know. How you guys feel? Doing this in person? We got a crew. There's people I know. actually people here. In, in Human the beings. real world. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And you guys actually have the premiere of your new movie, Apollo Ten and a Half. It's premiering right here in your hometown. Both of your hometowns, right? Yeah. You're here. Uh, Sunday night. Where can people Par see it? Paramount Theater. Paramount the, Theater. That's the place, man. It's going to be. Uh, it's going to be fun, yeah. Big in-person screening. Seats about 1,200 people. It's so. going to be great. How, uh, how do you feel about it? You guys, you're an actor in there, Glenn. Have you seen it yet? Is this? Oh yeah, uh, the, yeah. Mo the movie's incredible. You have to and say that. Is it Richard? Yeah. No, no. You, say that? <laughs> uh, you know, you know. You know He's like, like, come on. Yeah. Uh, no. No, the movie, the movie is is incredible. It's it's everything that makes Rick incredible <laughs> as a director. It's. It's a, a nostalgia bomb of epic proportions, and it's nostalgia just Nostalgia awesome. bomb yeah. of epic proportions, Ooh, I like yeah. that. Uh, I know, so. But just, just set it up for people who don't know, what's the movie about? Hmm. Which is an easy question, I know, but if you had to... If you had to well, it's a nostalgia bomb of, <laughs> of, of epic, epic proportions. proportions. Of epic proportions. <laughs> set in the 60s. Now, I always thought it's, it's kind of like two movies in one. It's like a kid fantasy and kind of an exacting recreation of the first moon landing. Apollo, in, yeah, in, July 69, kind of seen from both the, oh, let's say family, kid, consumer point of view. You're watching it on TV, you're kind of caught up in the hoopla of it, mm. and then it's also, you see it from the astronaut perspective, but through this kid's point of view. And that kid, in a He's way... He's been recruited, because this guy screwed up, this, uh, and they made a little mistake at NASA, and they needed a kid to... It's an actual fantasy I had as a second grader. And I remembered all these years later, because I think I had talked to my dad, I just, you know, when you're a kid, it's all blurry. You don't know the limits of the physical world. You well, you have the imagination. Yeah. You, you, you can be an astronaut. Why oh. can't you go to space? I know. I want to be an astronaut. Also, a few years before, I thought I was going to grow up and be a cartoon character. So I think that plays in the movie. <laughs> you too. thought you were going to grow Because it's up. animated. I thought I could. It, someone had yeah. to tell me you can't grow up and be like Bugs Bunny. I'm like, I can't. When did you find out that, like, I can't be Bugs Bunny? Did you just. I, longer than you should. It was <laughs> yeah. a couple extra years. <laughs> just crushed yeah. you. While we were seeing everybody I know, I just some, I now figured that out. Like, no, what do you mean I can't than, fight you, somebody yeah, said? Yeah, so I don't know. I had this, I was living in this world in my head that was pretty fun. You really believed in it, yourself. I hate, right? I hate the way the world kind of takes all things away from you. <laughs> no, but, but <laughs> this is a movie where it's, it's, it's a fantasy, it's a fantastical recreation <laughs> of a real life event that was just powerful for a young kid because you yeah. were a young kid in yeah, texas yeah. you saw apollo Living 11. Near NASA, yeah yeah and you you lived near last year you saw that shell go up and you're like mm -hmm. all right i get to now revisit this memory as a fantasy and recreate it what what happens if i went as a kid yeah and then you get to play the uh, the, the the lame astronaut who no, <laughs> man you guys are really dragging me through the mud no he's mission control no mission control but i do i do mess yeah. things up and i have to put a kid in a capsule and send him to the moon yeah Hey, you got to be a hero once, being John Glenn and his yeah. figures. Yeah, just you know, not you in your movies, that's for sure. You don't sure. get to be Shit. anymore. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> kind of, you get to be kicked. He, gives, he gives you the character yeah. roles. The it's character a humbling studies. experience working with Rick. <laughs> yeah. You've worked with Rick Good before, Greg, a lot. You know, what, well, Glenn, yeah. sorry. What is it about specifically his movies that really attracts you to like, you know, I want to be part of the, 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 the Richard Linklater, like Austin, if you will, uh, repertoire? You know, Maybe it's just that he can be home at night. Because <laughs> you, got, you got family here. Go home to my non-existent kids, yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, no, I, I, yeah, my mom and dad are here, and so it's, it's great working in Austin. I mean, there's no better existence than getting to shoot movies, which is my favorite thing in the world, and also being my favorite city in the world. Uh, but also, work with Rick is, is yeah. like, we have the best time on set. He's the greatest <laughs> collaborator I've ever worked with, and we just have a, the best time. I mean, this movie felt like a... I mean, it was just, it was like, it's the easiest, I know, easiest gig on the planet. And it's also just, um, uh, I, I think Rick's memory is one of the most impressive things that I've ever seen. Like the specific things that you remember and hold on to. I think we all tend to kind of look back at our childhood or some of these moments like, you know, an Apollo launch or something like that and kind of remember it in, in it with a macro lens. And, and Rick kind of zooms in on moments that kind of evoke really cool memories that, uh, I don't know, persist over decades. Like, you know, I get nostalgic. I wasn't around in 1969. I wasn't born until 88. But these specific things that happen in your childhood, like, are still around. And, like, it just, again, that's why I said nostalgia bomb. Yeah. <laughs> of, of <laughs> epic proportions, <laughs> sir. <laughs> of epic proportions. <laughs> but, you know, specifically yeah. those, those, gra those granular details that make up a story, right? Like, you go back 
69. I, mean, I don't even remember what I had for lunch like an hour ago. Mm -hmm. How did you tap into that? Did you have, uh, like, did you talk to parents, family members? Did you go back to archive? Did you have any relics from your childhood? I did get to, I would call my, I have two sisters. And I was like, I'm going through, what was the menu? What all did we, I remember like certain things they go, oh, don't forget the canned ham. I was like, oh yeah, the canned ham. You know, they kind of wee, 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 and take it out. And we have a great scene where it splashes Splum down and <laughs> yeah. kind of splashes You don't know lens. if it's like an alien an animated or like, lens yeah. splash. You should it's eat pretty this. Fun. Yeah, and then you see it become ham casserole. You see the ham sandwiches and it works its way into everything. So those kind of details were really fun. The domestic part of this, the, it's so funny. We have like just the utterly domestic everyday world with kind of the grandest thing people have ever accomplished kind of <laughs> blended together. How much here. of yourself and your story did you put in that fictional character? Oh. Or, or is it yeah, is yeah. it just the avatar of young Rick? Eh. It's um the whole the whole thing's kind of an amalgam of time and and I don't know. Well I think it was fun having a big family. Here there's six kids in the family, so you get all different kinds. But Stan, the the young astronaut, he he's the youngest. Okay. So you know, I, I definitely could relate to that. You feel like you're kind of left behind, but you're left here on your imagination too. So, and and did you guys film it here in the in, mm -hmm. in Texas? Right? Oh yeah. And so you get to come back home. You get your crew. Everyone knows you here. Mm -hmm. You're you're a local legend, but everyone it, says, "Oh, Rick, hey, <laughs> yeah, what's up?" Yeah. And then like, no big cool. deal. They 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 protect you. I feel well, like they they protect you and your crew here. Yeah. Well, that's how we we have a we have a wonderful industry here. It's just big enough and just small enough. Perfect. It's perfect for Austin. You, yeah. you made a choice. You could have filmed this as a live action, right? But you went and did animation. It's like the same type of style yeah. as Scanner Darkly. Why? Not really? No, not really. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So what? what how is it different? Because see, look, that's a layman. I saw it. I'm like, oh, I saw no. this visual style. But what's One different element, here? But no, it's very different. This had to be completely created uh, differently. I mean, we're on the moon. We're on, you know, so. My previous animations, which that's a long time ago, Scanner, we were filming that like 17 years ago or something. Oh my God. So this is more traditional animation, but I wouldn't say it looks traditional because it's a period piece. So we had to get the kind of the textures and the, the colors and the kind of the look of the 60s. We have kind of a, there's a slight documentary element to it. It you looks see, photorealistic. Like, yeah, yeah. So we had fun with that, but that's not so much that techniques as it is the ideas, you know, we just, but we achieve those in really traditional, uh, you know, 2D and 3D realms. Why animation? Like what, what you were sitting there, you wrote yeah. the script, you're like, all right, I'm going to make this movie live action, yeah. but this one, it animation. It didn't quite work live action. I mean, I've gestated on this for years, but it was kind of like, it never really worked in my head until it was animated. Then it was like, oh yeah, because it's, I mean, the fa fantasy, the reality, it kind of blends and you know, in your brain, that's where you're doing all the work of memory and fantasy. And um, so it, it, it started to work once it was animated. And I thought, and, and there's something just kind of fun about animation. You know, it just has an upbeat vibe to it. And so that's, that's well, kind of now, the, now that we know that you thought it. that you were going to be an animated I know. Character. And I'm always <laughs> trying to get back. <laughs> I'm always trying to get back. And Bugs actually does a brief cameo in the movie. Oh. A little Saturday morning cartoon action. I want, I want to get back to Bugs <laughs> I'm for in a there second. Somewhere. I want to get back to Bugs for a second. But as an actor, right, there, you have the live action, and now you got green screen, and now you got animation. What's the challenge of just committing yourself to a role where you realize like, okay, I'm gonna be either redrawn, you know, or I'm gonna be drawn like by someone else as a 2D character. It's like a voice acting role. Well, it was crazy is I realized while we were shooting it that it was shot on green screen in the exact same stage as where I shot Spy Kids 3, which was right. my first movie. When, Rodriguez, also, another, also another, another hometown hero. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we were we were just there. Yeah, very, very full circle. But yeah, in terms of performance, I mean, Honestly, like, it, I don't think it really changed it that much. You just sort of, that's what, that's kind of cool is you just have to kind of ground these elements. Yeah, you you may not have like an environment to play in, but, you know. You're st yeah, I always think because, you know, you have to kind of, uh, we had to make anything you were reacting with like a, <laughs> like an X switch or something, yeah. you know, so it's kind of I, all I've make seen, I've seen like the tennis ball. They put the tennis ball yeah. on the stick and they're like, this is, this is a raptor. Yeah. Be terrified. Totally, yeah. Totally. yeah. Be terrified, yeah. Every Greg. shot's a special yeah. effect. Everything's all made up. But it was kind of fun. It was like make-believe, which fits this movie perfectly. You know, you This just, fantasy of this 11-year-old sort of boy. You take off can... things and it's like, okay, you're on the moon now. Or, hey, we're at mission control. There's the, you know. So 
it's, you know, we're just making everything up. But it's you get to be a lot kid. of fun. You, yeah, you get, you yeah. Get paid to be kids. It has that. Like it amazing. has that vibe. It definitely feels like playing pretend. It's just like Rick, like mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, try this." Or you know, it's like it does. It's just like we're just sitting on a stage. Just I honestly Goofing. didn't even know if you were shooting a real it's, movie it, when we were shooting. Yeah. It's like it felt very, it felt <laughs> very it feels chill. Like filming a rehearsal. Or yeah, something. you know what yeah. I mean. Like it would. It, it's like yeah. Didn't feel like we were doing crew. it for real. So the fact that you know. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, with if Rich, Rick comes to you now and he goes, "I got an idea," all right? It's gonna be like a Paul ten and a half. It's, it's gonna be animated. You're gonna be Mission Control. I'm gonna make you do stuff. Just, just c come on and do it. Like, do you need to see the script? Or you're like, oh, it's a Rick production. I'm down. Uh, Rick, like I trust him. You sort of half pitched me on it. You were just like, I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm in, man. Yeah, what, like, what, what, was, what was the half play. pitch? It wasn't the... Uh... I forget, I was driving. I think I called you up. Yeah. So I remember I got a ticket, too, while I was driving. Oh, was that right? Hey, I got to pull Was up. it worth it? Children don't no. uh, drive and talk on the phone <laughs> at the same time. Uh, Rick, I had, yeah. I had got a I ticket for a reason. Legally. I didn't. Uh, he got a ticket for a reason. I got a ticket right, for speeding, I think. So what, for... what, was, what, was the, <laughs> what was the pitch? <laughs> no, the, pit, the pitch was, I mean, honestly, he'd been, he's been talking about this movie mm. for a very, very yeah, long time. You said, you said 2005? Yeah, four, when so, I first thought about it. But I really started talking about it more like about... Eight years ago, yeah, 2012 on. So when we shot everybody since, wants yeah. them, like yeah, yeah you were. Mind. It was definitely something you were marinating on, and yeah. and so we talked about what makes it special and how he was conceptualizing it. So when he was like, "Hey, would you want to? You know, you play John Glenn in Hidden Figures. Would you want to be at Mission Control?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah sure, man." So. Yeah, <laughs> like and everything goes full circle. And the thing yeah, is, sure. <clears throat> yeah. He and Zach Levi play these two. The, they're just the two NASA guys. They train him. They, so they, they didn't have to shoot for very long, but they're in the whole movie. Most people who come in and don't shoot that long, yeah. you're in one scene or something. This, they permeate, they really have a huge influence on the whole movie. They recruit the kid, yeah. they train the kid, they do mission control, everything up to, so it, it's kind of a fun, uh, it's, I won't even call it a cameo because it doesn't feel like in the movie it's, Definitely not. A so you're there throughout, it's, like there's yeah, yeah which is kind of random. Like watching it, I was like, your family's going to be very happy. I shot one day on this movie, yeah, you're just like <laughs> busted it out one day, and I'm like, you would I'm never know. Look at the movie. movie. <laughs> like I was telling Zach, I said, you wouldn't believe how much you're in this yeah. movie. He's like, that's the greatest one day's worth of work. I know. Work I, I, ever I, know. Yeah. You know, I have to. I'm going to do a quick pivot because you told me right before we actually yeah. Rick told me right before. So you, you played a pilot, John Glenn, yes. astronaut. Yep. And I just found out that you're in the new Top Gun movie. Yep. Which is which is coming out? Rick did not direct it, but we're just gonna. <laughs> but you have a call sign. What's it's a lot your more call sign? If I direct him. Hangman. All right. Hangman. That and and also Hangman is a a Texan. He's a Texan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The, you got the you, best of Texas, the best of the I Navy. Can't wait. You got, you got a cowboy hat. Like, what were you able to bring in some part of your Texas roots to it? Or? I mean, you, you, when you see the movie, I'm I, I uh, you know I'm under lock and key on on key details. <laughs> but of course. I, I of course. will say that. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of Texas uh, in in this thing. I mean, you know, being a, being a maverick, being sort of a, a, a wild, crazy guy on the ground and in the air is, really? is definitely part of it. Well, yeah. They cast the right guy for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said you were yeah. born in eight, uh, 88? 88. Okay, so Rick and I are old timers. We remember that Top Gun, the VHS, when it came out, 87, was like the first mass-produced VHS. Looks so the first movie that I brought home, my dad yeah. brought home to christen our TV. And the fact that, like... Well, everyone owned it because you could just... I remember going in a video store and I was looking for something. I'd say, we got Top Gun. You know, they had, like, <laughs> 800 copies of Top Gun. They're selling for, like, $19. That's right. So everybody... You'd rent your movie and then you'd buy a Top Gun. That's what everybody did. That's what we did. That's no offense, I didn't buy a Top Gun. Uh, but but, um, but he, we will go see Top Gun Maverick. I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You're, we, I want to go switch gears from Top Gun because you mentioned Bugs Bunny. And I'm just really curious. Why Bugs? Why Bugs? I don't know. He just kind of... He was the coolest, you know? He had yeah. it all figured out. Uh, the, one of the famous directors uh, of the Bugs Bunny cartoons said that everybody wants to be Bugs Bunny, but they're actually Daffy Duck. Yeah, I'm In that, that so. Daffy Duck is always anxious, he's nervous, the anvil, anvil always falls on his head, but like <laughs> Bugs Bunny, he always has a witty quip. Yeah, he's He always gets the last laugh, and he gets the carrot at the end. Astro and he's very, and he, 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 I don't know, the physical world really works for him. Do you remember that time he was, he was on a thing, they were falling to his death at high speed. He was on a thing, and just before it hit the ground, he just jumped off it. Yep. And so. But that didn't work for Daffy, right? Like, no, Daffy, no, Daffy he always fell. Yeah, Daffy always That was yeah, Daffy but Bugs always fell. just, he timed it right, and then he jumped off like he was jumping off from the ground. The I, thing blows up, and he's just like, <laughs> I'm but like, I, wow, you can do that. But you know, I feel like. <laughs> like his body wasn't going 50 <laughs> miles an hour. With your career, right, in a way that the way you've kind of done things your own way, kind of bend at stuff, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, now that I know much about the psychoanalyzing, yeah. the Bugs Bunny aspect of it. <laughs> but, 
you know, you've done things in your own way. Like it's a remarkable career. I'm saying this as a fan now. Oh, if you. I'm a fanboy out for a second, it's that you've uh, you, you start off with Slacker, right? Like mm -hmm. DIY all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that led to Days and Confused, which still holds up to this day. And then you're like, ah, I'm going to do Scanner Darkly. I'm going to do Boyhood. Let it's me just do a trilogy different. with the before trilogy. And you know, yeah, yeah. it it is one of those situations where you always feel like with each each project, do you feel like I, I want to just twist the medium as much as I can? I'm just lucky. Like, I get to make films and try to tell stories in the way I want to, I think the story should be told, you know? So, so I'm, I'm always looking to do something different or challenge myself or, I don't know. Every film's different. Every film has its own um, demands and challenges and where you want to push it, what you want to explore. So I've just been lucky. I've been able to do that a lot. I wanted so. to pitch a Rick Linklater directed superhero movie. Hmm. What would that be? Oh, I'm asking. Would you, if, like if a that. studio comes to you and says, whatever, Disney Plus, Netflix, yeah, yeah. Uh, Marvel, DC, they said, you get anyone. You get anyone, Rick. Take a crack. Hmm. Would but you do wait, it? By the way, what do we, make a superhero movie where it's just like, what does it mean to be a superhero? <laughs> no, think about they just walk around. You know, actually, we don't have to, yeah. it was a group of superheroes, but they're all kind of, they're all sitting around talking. <laughs> about yeah. their anxiety, you know, just like what it's like being a superhero, yeah. they're all a little anxious, long conversations it's like yeah, the the, between the superheroes. It's like the I day off yeah. of the Justice League. Yeah. Yeah. The Justice League is having like it's a the midlife time crisis. In between. Yeah. You always wonder, they're always being superheroes, but it would be the time in between when they're just kind of real. Would you ever actually, because I mean, that would be, no, no one's really tackled that. That would like, be funny. Like Anna actually, like you have the boys, right? You got all this stuff. Yeah. But that would be like, just a bunch of superheroes having like an hanging existential out. crisis hanging out, like Haunted a hangout superhero movie. movie. Yeah, you know what's crazy is you really think about like, like how, how often do like supervillains come and try to destroy the earth? You just go, a lot of times having a superpower with no villain to fight, you're just gonna be chilling and like thinking about what these, it means to be powerful. I'm sitting you know? on these powers, but yeah, like, what do I do with yeah. it? Dazed you know? and confused with my powers. My potential yeah. versus what? Yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah, like what, what? What are we? What are we doing here? What, what, what are we really, doing? What are we? We have these powers, but I'm just. But the thing is, like, look, the the movie is right. The industry's you got, you've heard this before. Like Coppola, like cr takes a crack at the superhero movies. Scorsese does for whatever, for better or worse, it's saturated the market, right? And yet you're here making your movies, right? You're you're making Boyhood. You're making you're making uh, hopefully another one in the Before Sunrise trilogy. Mm, maybe, we'll talk about that you know. in a second. Uh, you're making Apollo Ten and a Half. Do you feel like any pressure? Do you feel like having this crew, having Austin, having done it for so long? I can just be me and do what I want. Yeah, no pressure. Yeah, I've never felt any pressure to do anything I didn't want to do. So I'm I'm lucky that way. So I mean, but you know, I love our industry. It's it's so open. You'd be surprised the calls I get or the inquiries, and it's not like, yeah, you know, there's just it's always everybody's. It's like a matchmaking industry. Oh, you're interested in that? I didn't know. Well, you know, who knows? And then that's what I've you, come aboard a couple of things that it's like, oh, yeah. So it's happened for me a couple of times. Something out there really spoke to me, but usually it's something that's, you know, something closer to me, maybe. I want to, I want to. make it your own. It's, it's a well, personal. Well, you always make it your own. Yeah, you make it your own, no matter what you're doing, so. Uh, I got two questions left for you. Um, I want to take it back to Slacker. There's, there's something really profound about that, that the way that movie <laughs> was made, and the fact that it impacted this generation of filmmakers. Even got Kevin Smith, who said, man, I saw Slacker. And I thought, maybe I could do clerks. Uh, for young folks watching right now, they have access to technology that we didn't have growing up. Yeah. Any advice to someone sitting out there right now saying, I'm a nobody, but I want to have like, you know, Glenn and Rick's career. What, what can I do? What can I do? Well, the good thing in, as far as filmmaking goes, there's no excuses. When I was coming up, the excuse was, oh, it's really expensive. You got to have equipment. You got to have editing machine. You can do it all now. So if you're a filmmaker, you have, don't have any excuse for not, what are you doing right now? You could be making a film. With your so, phone, straight up. Yeah, but editing, it's, it's really, it's not about the technology, about lots of money, it's about the ideas. You know, what do you have to say? So, if that, you have a point of view, that never goes passion. away. What story do you have to tell? What's your unique view on the world? You know, it, it takes a long time to find your voice and everything. So, but, uh, you know, there's just no ex excuse and there's no replacing, like, you know, hard work. You gotta really dedicate your life to it. You know, I think people in, in our disposable, easily accessible culture think, oh, I can just be there. It's like, no, nah, you know how hard, like a guy like this has worked his whole life. You yeah, know how many auditions? Call sign. You know he's how many, you know, like, gun. you know how many, you yeah. know, it's not a casual thing. No, it's, it's, it's really, a full-time commitment. Think of like, when you see pro athletes, you go, well, they're naturally good, but you know they're going to like spring training. They're working really hard. 
it's the same. It's the same in the arts. So if you don't have a work ethic, I don't know. So work hard, well, don't think have a it. point of view, and, and, then, and then also, you know, what, what, you got an end. Well, uh, be talented to begin with. <laughs> yeah. so that's a good start. <laughs> All right. So I hate to, that's kind of ineffable, uh, but whatever. That, but well, uh, I got, I, with the, the last minute I got, <laughs> good. Of, of, be good. Of, of Rick's movies, which what ones? You of, of Rick's movies, which one's your favorite? Oh, oh my God! Well, uh, wow, that's a great. You can question. say it. You can say it. What? what? Pretend it's, he's not here. CW, Pretend he's not here. Fine. Oh, was it what? One of my, no, the one we did. Oh, everybody wants. I, I, I truly, I truly think everybody Your wants them. This movie we shot together. I don't think my film experience so, will ever be topped. That was like the greatest movie experience. And if I had life. to watch one of my movies like right now, if you made me sit here and watch yeah. one of my movies, I think I would watch that one. Well, look at just that! All right. An underrated just for sure. gem, I think. Because just all those guys, we, we, we just had so much fun. It's reliving how much fun we had. And, and it shows it. on the screen. It shows. It was the camaraderie. It was the and best. All that. It was the yeah, best. Yeah, yeah that was just. It's also just a special, like special moment in all of our lives. Yeah. yeah. And we are really appreciative you guys took time to come here. We're in studio for the first time in two years. You got two hometown so heroes here. here. You got just... the premiere of Apollo Ten and a Half. Can you tell people where they can see it? Where can they see the premiere? this weekend at South By. Yeah, well, it's at the Paramount Theater. No place better to watch a movie in this whole world than the Paramount. And then, um, you know, it's going to be on Netflix in a few weeks. Let's see at the Paramount. But, but if you have a choice, <laughs> you know. See at the see, Paramount. And it's going to have some th theatrical. It's going to play at the Austin Film Society, I think the Alamos. So if you miss it at the Paramount, you can still see it with others. You know, it's a comedy. It's good to hear people laughing around the theater. And then check out Glenn next year. In Top Gun. Oh, this year. Yeah. Oh, this year. Oh, this year. They pushed right. this thing one more time. <laughs> it it should have been a. Yeah, I. Yeah. No, 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 no. Glenn's gonna. Yeah, please, year. please. This He's year. Gonna jump out of a summer. window <laughs> if, if they push this any <laughs> longer. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Thank you guys for stopping by. That's Rick and Glenn. You can watch all of our studio yeah. interviews on the South by Southwest TV app, available on Apple TV, Roku, Android TV, and Amazon Fire. These interviews are also available on YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash South by Southwest. And for a complete list of our interview schedule, check out sxsw.com slash studio. I'm Ajatali. Thanks for tuning in.